Hey guys, well guess what? Your home inspector through the inspection report will find stuff. No matter what, no matter if it's a brand new home or a used home, they will find stuff. So this is what to look for and what to expect. Hello everyone, Alberto Murilla, your realtor and go to investor. Welcome back to another video. And today's video will be the three tips before and after your home inspection. So check it out. The tip number one will be find a reputable inspector. But however, I'm gonna break this down into three, okay? First, you can find an inspector through your friends and family, okay? People that have bought a house before and have, you know, deal with a situation where that inspector really, really point out the details about the home. The number two is, of course, you can Google it. You can find them on Yelp. It's a great source to find inspectors, okay? And of course, number three, you can ask your real estate agent. However, this is the tricky point of the real estate agent. We are not allowed to recommend just one source, okay? Because we are licensed. We're not allowed to recommend one source. Uh, of an inspector, we need to give at least three. I personally give like five or six or ten. It does have none, a lot of inspectors. But why? It's a liability issue, right? In case that they don't perform and the buyer gets really angry at us, they can turn around and sue us. Uh, and this is a story time, so bear with me. Uh, back in the day, I recommend somebody, and uh, of course, I give them three choices. And they say, hey, Alberto, I don't have neither the will, neither time to choose one, okay? So can you just point us, you know, point us in the right direction? And I said, sure, of course. Well, this is what happened. And it was not necessarily my fault, nor the inspector. It is a uh, kind of like a learning time in here. Number one, the AC, okay? The inspector and the inspector world, okay? The AC temperature differential, just, just follow me here. The temperature differential has to be at least a minimum of 14, one fourth, okay? However, in the home warranty world, the temperature differential on the AC unit, okay, has to be really on that one five, 15 degree, okay? So what happened? The AC goes out three months, probably four months after they bought the house, and a an inspection report, we saw that, you know, the, the, the AC was not deficient to work as an intended. However, in the home warranty, like I explained, it did not meet the minimum requires to be replaced. So here it is, my client, after four months of moving into a house, the AC goes out, they have to spend almost, it was $3,000 around that, and uh, to replace the unit that failed. And unfortunately, it felt really, really bad because I pointed that inspector. So you see the point, it's a liability. Uh, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Us as a realtor, as a licensee, we don't want to put in that liability situation. In this case, my client understood that at the end, right, it was just the technical information that I learned throughout the years. This experience is what differentiates your realtor from the rest. Number two. What to ask after an inspection is done? Okay, I'm gonna break that one in three again. First, sit down with your agent and go through the report. Most of the time, agents, we do have a lot of experience by reading these reports. At the beginning, it can be kind of complicating to navigate through that inspector. But that would be the first number, the, I'm sorry, the number one. Sit down with your agent and go through that inspection. Okay, uh, in my career I've seen hundreds and hundreds of uh, those inspections and I know what to look for and what uh, the lingo and the technicalities they use so I can explain them to you or your agent can do that for you. Number two, look out for safety issues, okay? Uh, sometimes they spell, they write, they mean stuff and most of the time they call as safety issues. Uh, again, talk to your agent about what their safety issues are, okay? But this will connect me to number three. I want to call something that, uh, what is called the grandfather clause. Okay, properties in the 90s were not built in the same code, okay, building code as the 90s and of course 2000s and current 
uh, building code. So maybe if that property is 50 years old or 20 years old, of course, they're gonna be, they're gonna call out safety issues that before were not a safety issue, today is a safety issue, okay? And uh, homeowners, of course, they're not gonna be up to code, they're gonna be improving their properties, okay? For example, a home, a home uh, water heater, they have to be plumbed into outside the house, they have to be elevated, so on and so forth, the expansion tank. Well, guess what? In the, you know, if that uh, water heater is 10 years old, most likely it's not gonna be up to code and they're gonna be calling those items out. So first and more important, uh, what to do after an inspection is done, please sit down with your agent, okay? If you have questions, of course, reach out to the experts. If there's a roof issue, then call out the roofer in other words, we are not the expert because you have to be licensed to be a plumber, licensed to be an electrician, licensed roofer, etc. But we've seen enough, okay? We cannot give legal advice. It's just we, I was taught that we have to be the source of the source, okay? So we can give experience back to our clients, but more importantly is we need to connect the dots with the people that is experienced, and that's number two. Now, number three. What is a deal breaker for you? Okay, that's what it comes down to. And the, I'm gonna break down this one in three items. The first one, main components. Maybe, maybe a foundation, right? Which is, as far as I know, one of the items that are very expensive to repair. Okay, it goes into the thousands and it can get really complicated if the foundation breaks and now it has sewers and plumbing issues. Okay, that component may be a deal breaker for you. And then I'm gonna break it down to foundation, maybe the roof, okay, structural issues, uh, electric issues and plumbing. Those are what I wanna suggest my clients, the, the, uh, the, the top five, those are the items that I will be looking out for. Then number two, what's a deal breaker for you? Maybe the expenses, the, the, the amount of money that you're gonna require to repair those issues. So uh, that may be a deal breaker for you. Not only, uh, maybe the foundation is fine, maybe the roof, but whatever, maybe the electrician, which they do charge a lot, if it's a master electrician that they know what they're doing, they will charge a lot. So we need to really figure out, sit down and figure it out. What are the expenses? And that will be a deal breaker for you. And last but not least, and this is how I wanna finish this video is, what are my options? Okay, what are my options? And this is what I tell sellers and buyers. When it comes down to inspections, okay, there's only five outlets, I guess, five uh, different ways it can go down. The first one, if you find, well, an inspection finds 20 items that you want to repair and pretty much there are all of them that you want to get repaired, the first answer is the seller that I might say, you know what, yes, I'll repair all of them. And then you put that in an amendment and then you move forward. The second one will be, well, out of those 20, I'll fix 10, and the other 10, you deal with it. Okay, that will be the second option, the second outcome. The third outcome, you know what? They don't wanna be dealing with repairs and calling contractors, so on and so forth. So what happens there is they're gonna call out contractors and they're gonna give a bid. In this case, for example, those 20 items, the, the, the bid will be $5,000 to repair all of them, and then, you know what, they're gonna give you, I mean, they're gonna uh, give you, maybe in concessions, maybe gonna lower the price, whatever it is, okay, they're gonna give you that money, uh, not, obviously not in cash, just in closing costs, they're gonna lower the price and you're gonna be dealing with your uh, own repairs. Number four, they might say, you know what, out of those $5,000, I'll give you, I'll contribute half of it. So, those 20 items, $5,000, I'll give you half of it. So I'm gonna give you 2,500 person closing cost or lower the price, whatever it is, and that's the fourth outcome. And fifth outcome that sometimes we don't realize it, and uh, the, the era right now in real estate is really demanding there's a seller's market. They might say, you know what? No, I'm not gonna repair anything. You're buying a sis, you're allowed to do that. And they say, you know what, you want this house? buy and assist. I'm not going to repair. I'm glad that you did an inspection report that you are aware of now, but I'm not going to repair. But understand this, you might be a seller later on, you understand? And this will apply to you. You might say, yes, I repair album, 
I repair a few of them. I'll give you cash or closing costs, closing costs or lower the price. I'll give you a, a half of it, right? Or I will not repair it. Anyways, for more tips, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day.